episode four. Ooh, we're four. We're we're two thirds of the way through. Just thinking through the math there for a second there. Um, yeah. Ooh. Um, only two to go. Only two to go, and the second one yeah. is only, well, the sec the penultimate is only around the corner. Oh well, I think this. I just want to first, firstly say I know there's been a, quite a, li- a bit of controversy around episode four. I'm gonna be honest. I thought it was alright, uh, and I didn't really the controversy things that have been brought up. I don't think are too much of a a bad um, impact, but we'll go we'll go into that. But again, I'm joined by Christian, and g'day, g'day. we will get straight into episode four. The last of the Starks. So, Christian, I think we have to obviously start off where it started off. The um, the aftermath of obviously what happened of the Battle of Winterfell, as we see all of uh, our yeah. um, fallen heroes, fallen heroes on their um. The fire, uh, what do they call them? Like fire, not fire pits, like uh, uh, pyres. funeral pyres. Yeah, pyres, that's right. Yeah. Um, and like we could see the entire, like the scope of it. Like there's like these giant wooden pyres everywhere and there's just like obviously more than 10, bo- there's like a lot of bodies on each of them, right? So mm-hmm. it, it definitely goes to show like, yeah, this was a pretty, pretty big battle that a lot of people died. But definitely... It was such a, like, a, I guess, yeah, an emotional scene because it's just, like, everything, like, you felt. It's just, like, there was no, there was, like, just silence for most of it until John talked. But, like, just the silence and just, like, just, like, thinking about what's going through their mind. Like, as, like, for example, each of the characters that we follow, like Danny, John, um, Sansa, we, um, Aya and all that, right, they all, like, have their own person they go to. And, like, we get that sort of sense of, like, oh, this, like, connection between them. It's, like, it, this connection's come to an end now. It's, like, just, just seeing that sort of play out was definitely, like, a really... It, it, it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't obviously happen like that if we, if this was only, like, like a one-season TV show. But because it's a eight-season TV show, the sort of, like, uh, the connection and the relationship made between, like, the character... For example, the biggest one, I guess... Or the biggest, well, actually, I don't want to say the biggest one. They're all pretty big deaths. But, like, yeah. for example, Jorah and Danny, or um, uh, Theon and Sansa, like, they're, I would consider the two biggest ones because they've been there since the beginning, right? Definitely. And, I would because, say, like, oh, out of those two, I reckon my favorite was Theon. Yeah. Because for me, I had a lot of depth there, especially, yeah. like, I felt really emotional when. And so put the stock yes. oh, onto the no. I, I was thought, like, because yeah. it just, it's, it continued. I thought his arc was ended, but even then his arc continued. Yeah. It was like he's yeah. officially just accepted as a Stark as well. Yeah. And I was just, it was, it just, I felt really sad. I was yeah, like, no, I, was, yeah, I, was I really wish sad. the one was still there, but it makes like, yeah. Like, I, I, I ev- like saying like last, last episode, just, it, it was like a heroic moment for him, and it, it, it's yeah. like his deserving moment of, of this like obviously his entire arc, his like character arc was like it's all led up to that, and definitely like it was fulfilled, and everything sort of happened sort of almost picture perfect in the sense that it, it played out to like whose character was as he changed, and it definitely sort of all came full circle really in the end. You know, he was a Stark, but wasn't really Stark at the beginning, but now he is a proper Stark. You know? And it's just that sort of full circle sort of situation. Um, but yeah, then we see John, this sort of like very heroic speech. You know, you see all like the the heroes say when people, you know, when they, when they have to say goodbye. Um, obviously, it's like a very typical thing, but just like the, with all those sort of moments of just like these characters sort of mourning and sort of talking about like these people, everyone, they who died and everyone who's still there, you know, they all did their job. They all protected the realm and sacrificed the rest, sacrificed themselves for the rest of the world, essentially. Like, the rest of the world may never know, really, what these people did, but it's sort of like... And I guess that's also, like, a thing just in in general. It's like, 
these things happen and a lot of the time even the people sacrifice their lives for a lot of things not many like not everyone's gonna actually know that and that's sort of like a, a sort of interesting thing to, to think about is just like th- they did such a big battle but in reality half the people in Westeros probably don't even give a shit like not being rude or anything but they probably like didn't really care because they didn't have anything to really do with it considering where yeah. they were they had to deal with like Cersei and all that shit but still yeah, sorry, I especially love the way that John delivered that speech. Yeah. Because, like, with the whole um, foreshadowing of him, you know, being the king throughout all the whole show. True, yeah. Like, he definitely sounded like when he yeah. gave that. Yeah, yeah, you know? see, it was very, like, yeah, very um, a kingly in a sense, yeah, the way he, he said it, the way he sort of, like, um, even sounded even he sounded yeah. like even a deeper voice than yeah. it than normally like sort seen. of like like the and and just the respect everyone else had like as they all watched him because they all yeah. like is that respect of like yeah they they believed in him and everything and, and stuff like that um and yeah it's obviously goes to to that point of like yeah maybe john should just be the king but you know even then is that the right decision we'll only find out by the end of the seasons but um yeah then after that, we go to the uh, celebration feast. I definitely want to say, like, at the first, like, initial part of it, it was very, like, uh, I guess for, like, almost, like, the the mood at the start was almost, like, a bit dark, and it was like, a bit, like, I guess somber in the sense. Because somber, it was, yeah, like, that's what I was about to say. Because it's, like, they're celebrating them surviving, but a lot of people died and a lot of shit. Like, the things they've seen, you'll never forget about that. Literally seeing Nightmare like fueled just trying to come to grips with it all but then obviously we jump into it with Gendry sort of asking like the hound like you've seen I and then the hound's like obviously like that's the only thing you think about you know at the moment yeah or you, or you smell the dead bodies and everything that's what you think about he's like uh, yeah um and then he goes up Gendry goes up and then Danny's just like you're the fucking lord of uh Storm's End now I guess uh yeah okay thanks um uh, <laughs> like shit um because but as a as a power play though yeah yeah when yeah 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 that. oh yeah obviously it was a power play i don't think she did that like yeah of, well i guess a bit of a kindness for heart because well it's more i guess she considering what gentry did because he was like a a big asset to them because he built all the weapons well not all the weapons but he was like one of the main people who built all the dragon glass weapons so and sort of what he yeah. did and um, the main blacksmith and like obviously crafted the weapon for iron yeah although she didn't she didn't use that weapon to kill the night king but still i know but it saved helped. her yeah um but yeah then she's just yeah you're the lord of storm's end we've never we've never seen storm's end before so i wonder what like if it's just like a shitty town um <laughs> it's just like a <laughs> small thing because like remember like honestly I don't uh, really remember like Stannis Storms Barath- that Yeah, Stannis Baratheon went to Dragonstone. Yeah, yeah, Dragonstone. Yeah. That's what it's called. And Robert Baratheon obviously was in King's Landing. So either like they just obviously because they're king and whatever, and they just didn't go back to Storms End. Is it just because they didn't want to, or is like oh. it's just like a shit show compared? To, it's like compared to everything was, else. It looks great. Was it Renly? Was it Renly that was that Storms End? I think, but we never saw Storms End, did we? I think. I don't think we saw it. I think we just saw, like... I just remember one time with uh, Renly's, like, his big army. But they were outside, like... They were on, like, the... They were on, like, the cliffs somewhere. And they were talking the with Stannis. Side, yeah. So I don't know if that was near it. It felt like yeah. it might have, have been near to, I have to look it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm not... But yeah, now he's the Lord of Storm's End. And then I think... I don't know if you... I, I had a look at this. And Jamie looked like he was surprised. When... Cause... He when was proclaimed that no, when he said he was the son of Robert Baratheon, because I didn't think Jamie knows that. Because oh, yeah. I swear, um, the way he looked is like, wait, what? I, th- I swear that's sort of like the the He's facial. Like, oh, yeah. It's like what the fuck? like, I f- I I think that because when yeah Danny said that, I just because it like focused the camera on him for like a couple of seconds. I think yeah, I think he didn't actually even know that. So yeah, so yeah, you know. and it's just interesting to think to come by. But um, then. You know, the celebration then kicks off as eventually because um, now everyone's like, everyone fuck yeah. Everyone starts drinking. <laughs> everyone starts drinking and everyone gets into it. We go into like a lot of fucking shit, you know. It's like, a, I guess it's just like 
all these people now they're just sort of like trying to sort of everything out of their system and just sort of like try and enjoy yeah. <laughs> life that they've kind of not that they've got now um and just enjoying the, the company of everyone else and we get like the little sort of interactions with, with everyone we got bran um like bran was talking to Tyrion. Tyrion's I, don't, I can't remember what Tyrion said but oh yeah Tyrion's just something like like i i, I envy you bran and bran, bran's just sort of like looking at him you know you shouldn't envy me you know, I live, I mostly live in the past, and just the, even, even though, like, everything's all right, everything's, like, everything's come, you know, good, he's still just this unemotional stick Yeah, figure. he's just, like, this, this dead camera in the back. <laughs> he's just there, just sort of, uh, he doesn't even celebrate, he's just like, yeah, I, I guess this is, this is my life now. Because, like, yeah, um. He's like, yeah, cool, man. <laughs> Tyrion's like, um, you're the, you're gonna be the next Lord of Winterfell, but he's like, uh, I don't know, like, I'm not, like, a Stark. Or, I, he didn't say I was a Stark, but he doesn't know what he wants anymore or some shit like that. What the fuck does that mean? Like, he said he doesn't want anything. He doesn't yeah. desire anything. What? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? He's so weird now. Come on. I don't get how that works, because, like, obviously he desired for everyone to survive. Well, did he really, though? Yeah. I like, guess he, I don't it's more or less he wanted to survive, but... There, there's a lot of theories around Bran, but... I yeah, still want to know what the fuck he did all last season. Uh, last season, last episode. Where was yeah. he? He's just looking at the like, battlefield. Like, I'll quickly mention this yeah. There's this whole thing about um, the Three-Eyed Raven is technically the Lord of Light. Ah, but yes, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't want to dive into that because that's going to take too long. But, like, yeah. it, it kind of makes sense in the way of, like, Bran giving Melisandre all those, all that knowledge. You know, because he has all of that. True. Yeah, I yeah. guess. But, but then with that, so what, like, that would be him as, like, so Bran is, like, the avatar of the Lord of Light or some shit like that? Yeah, maybe, like, a disciple or, yeah. like, I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, yeah. yeah. Moving on. But then, yeah, we get all this other sort of banter. We get Jamie, Brienne, and Tyrion, and Podrick having their bit of drinking game. And then Bloody obviously Podrick, <laughs> and then um, oh, Tyrion, Tyrion brings out the question, well, not the question, uh, whatever the truth stuff, the truth game is, and then you yeah. know, to, uh, Brienne's a virgin, and she's like, she just sort of stands up, and then Tormund comes over. <laughs> He's like, it, it's Bloody. all over now, you know. <laughs> now we're back together, and she's like, now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move past you, and, and then Jamie, you know, follows. Brienne and then Tormund just has that realization. Oh fuck! You know he's like, no. Yeah, I love it. It's and then, so funny. And, and then, then he's just like bawling his eyes. Yeah. Then he goes to the, <laughs> then he goes to Sandor. Um, I can't remember what he says, but yeah, he's just sort of like. Um, yeah, he's just like. She's standing there. This yeah. Northern. This guy comes down, so, yeah. down from south, takes her from me. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, uh, click it, and, and it's just, sort just of, like, I, and, I, I, I honestly, that was the most funny. Thing yeah, and yeah, really like fun. that scene is the funniest thing. Yeah, and I like Sandor when, when just Podrick like, is like, oh yeah, when yeah. he looks at him and like his face is just, just like smiling. Yeah, his smile is just like. That. <laughs> uh, but then he when just he, said it all. yeah, when Perfect. he talks to Sandor and then Sandor's just like, don't touch me and just sort of like fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah. But then yeah, we get all this other stuff and I think obviously the biggest part of this thing was like I guess. I guess it's a jealousy thing. Danny, just the way Danny was compared to oh everyone God, else, yeah. you could just tell she was like, she was like all alone. She was like, yeah. she, like, and she's just watching Even over John, getting, Var- getting, yeah, like, just, just I mean, there. yeah, Varys is just in the corner. He's watching boring. Her, Why didn't like, he talk to her? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously he's there to observe, kind of like Bran, but you know, in a different way. <laughs> yeah, I th- yeah, I think, um, I think a very different way. <laughs> yeah, Varys is actually alive, uh, but yeah. <laughs> John's just getting over there, you know, he's respected, he's getting all this praise. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and Danny is clearly jealous. Yeah, you, know? you could just tell, and sort of, I like how it sort of eventually sort of like, it's like, the, I think the music like d- um, dims down and changes pace and the tone as we focus on Danny, as she's like looking at everyone, just, it's just like the realisation, not the, I guess, yeah, realisation in the sense that like, she she won't ever really be like John here. She won't ever be like, you know, how she was respected in Essos in the way that all well, the slaves yeah. respected her here, considering because she's a foreigner, it's sort of just that realize that 
I guess it's also that sort of realization of just like everything she's sort of been told and everything like how like this sort of when she when we first saw her with her brother um when they were talking about going back to Westeros you know they're saying oh the people are going to come help us you know they're all gonna they're gonna rally behind House Targaryen but in reality they fucking don't even care and obviously here that's sort of like they don't really care for a Targaryen obviously the she saved them all, but that being said, you know, they respect John because of what he's done. He sort of did most of it, in a sense, I guess. He brought them all together. But yeah, it's sort of just that interesting thing. And, and then she leaves, um, step, uh, going ahead a bit. Then we see um, Gendry finally finds Aya. Ooh, ugh, jeez. Oh, fuck. Um, felt like yeah. my heart sank there Become, a bit. Becomes an official Baratheon first thing, gets rejected first by a star. Gets re- ooh. <laughs> oh god, I was fuck. I feel sorry for him. It's just like, um, the, yeah, fuck. The, for very sorry. But it makes sense. Like, Obviously, it makes sense. I, but it's I just like not gonna be able to, no. never. But I just feel yeah. sorry for Gendry now. I feel so sorry for yeah. him. I feel so sad. So like, many broken hearts in this episode. No. Um. <laughs> then we move ahead a bit. Then we finally see. Well, we don't see it, but you know, Brienne and Jamie. Yeah, uh, the ship finally sails. Um, yeah, so that like honestly, like I ship it, but don't ship it as well. Like it made me feel like a bit uncomfortable because like I was so used to seeing uh, Brienne as yeah. this mighty yeah. warrior and knight, and like then suddenly she's just all over Jamie. It's yeah. I don't know. Like it was the sa- it was the exact same way I felt when Iron and Gendry got together. Yeah, you know? I guess because it's like, like the where they that. came from was just like this really like this friendship that they had. I guess that's that sort of aspect too. Just like, if you th- look at it, sort of like the w- how they've come together. Like at first, when Brienne and Jamie first met, Brienne was taking him as prisoner. You know, yeah. And they hated the living like, shit out of each other. Yeah. She just wanted to like get get it over with and everything. But in the now, sort of how far we've come. Yeah, I guess it 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 shipped, but maybe it's not the best ship um, to go. Um, but you know, whatever. Moving ahead, then we f- we see John and Danny in their room talking, and you know she. Um, I-, I feel like definitely I don't know like I the way she like walked into it and sort of went straight to to John. I just felt like there's something obviously going on. It's just like it felt too almost like she was being seductive in a sense. I don't know. I just felt that yeah. when she walked in. No, she was using all of that to to get power over him. Yeah, I felt. Yeah, I think like, that's the thing. She was using their relationship to stop him from yeah essentially gaining power yeah and then you know obviously she, they talk about it all i mean she doesn't really need to he doesn't want the throne yeah but like i think it's like also the re- she like she knows john well enough that he's never he's probably not going to hold that secret i guess maybe yeah i feel like maybe she even knows that john who he is as a character she would even realize that that's why she's begged him and everything Right, she probably realized yeah, that. that was honestly, I was, felt like it's so weird to see that. Oh, uh, begging yeah, it's just like, I'm begging, like, it's like I no. like it's, but yeah, it's sort of just a uh, like, just the, I guess, like, yeah, there's obviously the reason why behind that, and just sort of Danny, just she doesn't want that to like happen, she doesn't want him to reveal his true identity because then, yeah, it's gonna screw everything up. But I guess then look, again, look it's sort of just went. like, yeah, yeah, look how that went. Fucking people yes, cannot in- keep a lie. Like they can't keep anything. <laughs> trust is like there's yeah, no such thing as trust yeah. in this fucking. People's thing. words don't mean anything. Yeah, nothing means anything <laughs> in this TV show. Information just spreads like wildfire now. It literally does. But just yeah, that. But you know, I just feel like God. It's just fucking. Wow, he's born from you know. But then it's like it, it's the whole idea because can the I guess the setting and everything because the whole idea everything works on like bloodlines. Bloodlines are like the biggest important thing, you know. People coming from big houses means a lot of things. So if they come from a presti- prestigious house that has a rightful claim, you know, people are going to want that. But who knows what will happen at the end? We could see, you know, that um, oh, we'll go into this a little bit later. But you know, maybe it would be Danny and John on the throne. But obviously, there's complications there. Maybe it's just one or the other because something happened, or maybe it's none of them. Um, and it's somebody else. Honestly, honestly, well, after that, I don't think both yeah will be there. There's no think. way that both of them will be there. 
Like, I can definitely see both of them not being on there. I just feel I like by the feel... end of this, like, I don't think there's going to be the throne, if you get what I mean. I feel like there's not going to be, yeah. like, this whole idea about the Game of Thrones. It's not going to be that anymore. If anything, it's going to be, like, a whole idea of, like, we're moving into a democracy now and shit like that. You know, it's, it's, yeah. if you think about it, in, like, this in terms of yeah, history. Like, back in, like, season one, the, the famous line, you know, if you play the game of thrones you win or you die and i don't see anyone winning at the so yeah i don't th- yeah i don't see anyone really winning i feel like everyone's just gonna die <laughs> it, it, yeah. if you think about it in terms of like a historical level a little bit in terms of like medieval stuff and because this is like a feudal society in the sense that they're run by a king or a queen in terms of like real life stuff and the way society works is eventually they're going to get to a point that they're going to change like government and society and stuff like that and i think obviously yeah. by the end of this i feel like because i feel like that's sort of where it's sort of leading up to considering what danny's sort of been saying she's like she wants to get rid the, the world of tyrant it, it, like i want to talk about that later without um but like she mm. wants to get rid of tyrants and obviously that kind of implies that maybe it won't be a throne it will be something else because the tyrant will always be there if there's a throne because th- who knows it'll just be like yeah it'll just transition to some other thing democracy some shit like that who knows yeah it's sort of just who knows what will happen by the end of it but moving ahead even further um then we get to the scene with um Tyrion and jamie in the in the tavern i think this yeah this is like before they all leave um they're in like an they're in their tavern talking to each other and there we see the man himself the mercenary the cutthroat himself sir baron of the black the black water, yeah. He arrives with, with his crossbow. With the, bow. with the crossbow. And fuck, he is truly a mercenary. He yeah. literally... I I just... I, I had that feeling. I was just like, maybe he won't be was, this mercenary. Maybe he'll be like... Maybe he'll become a changed yeah. man. Maybe you might yeah, understand I that. We, we, yeah, I remember we were talking about this. And we said, oh, yeah. Like, we were, prob- we were hoping yeah. that, like, you know... that He'll come to his senses. Friendship, his friendship with... Tyrion and Jamie would stop him. Yeah, but but no, clearly, it turns out no. Um, but turns out High Garden doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, it turns like, out High Garden is fix that though. Yeah, like he's just. I think he's just lost his shit. Like he, he just wants to get things done. He's just. I think he's he just fed up. Anymore. I think he's just yeah, fed, he's fed up, up with it. He's just fed up because yeah. he's literally playing their games. He's, he's taken enough of their shit, and he's just yeah. I, it's either this is happening or you're gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. It's understandable in the sense that, yeah, I guess he just wants to fucking... He's done quite a lot. And I bet, like, considering, like, I guess when we first saw him, he was already, like, a veteran mercenary. So, like, the first time in season one, I think, or season two, whatever, when we first saw Bronn, he was already, like, a, ver- a veteran sort of mercenary because he, like, the things he said. And, and I guess, yeah, he's had a pretty big life. But, you know, there's an interesting thing that he sort of brought up in the sense that um, when he's, like, when Jamie's, like, we're not giving this cutthroat high garden, But then he's, like... Like, where the fuck do you think all these other houses came from? They were all formed from cutthroats. And that makes sense. Yeah. Because, yeah, in reality, how else would they form? They didn't because, just like, pop up. yeah, they didn't just pop up. People weren't just, like, friendly. They didn't come with silk suits and, you know, robes and give people money. They killed people. And it all makes sense. And who knows? Uh, we'll watch a Game of Thrones in the future, which will have House Bronn, or whatever the fuck it will be called. Well, it won't be called House Bronn, but there'll be a house formed by him. That'd be cool. It'll probably be House Black. Oh, yeah, yeah, House Blackwater, that'd be kind of interesting. Ron Black. Yeah. But, yeah, it just sort of... Uh, there was a funny fucking quote that I love that Bron said after he um punched Tyrion in the in the nose. He's like, <laughs> only only death will shut him up. It's just like, yeah, nothing will fucking shut Tyrion up. It's just a very interesting thing. Yeah, and, like, Tyrion's just like, you broke my nose. <laughs> and he's just like, I know it's not broken. I've yeah. broken enough noses to know it's not. Um, but then... Um, he leaves them, but he, he doesn't really take sides anymore, and he's sort of like, um, I'll find you if you're alive or dead or whatever, you know. Because, um, like, now he's playing both games, you know. He, he, he'll yeah. win either way, so. Essentially, yeah. Um, it's, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a bit disappointed. I, want, I wanted to see him, like, join the fight, maybe. He might. He still might, but I doubt it. Anymore. I don't I didn't see why he would, just because of the way we've seen him now. I don't, I don't see why he would help them considering that like the things he said he's like i'm like not a fighter anymore but i'm still got me killing days left so mm. but who knows we'll find out we'll find out soon enough 
And then we move forward to, I guess, the next day on it is when the armies finally uh, leave, begin to leave. We see Sandor and Aya leave together, uh, assuming they're going to do the Clegane Ball and Aya's going to go kill Cersei or whatever. Yeah, going to King's I'm Landing. totally seeing that happening. They've, it, they've already infiltrated King's Landing. Aya's plotting to kill Cersei. And... I just feel like it's too easy. I just, I just feel but, like it's too uh... easy. I, do you know what would be cool? Do you know what would be fucking cool? Turns what? out. I just want to think, I'm just, this is sort of speculation in the sense that I would assume that Cersei would know about, like, well, Cersei, even Kyburn or anyone there would know about the Faceless Men. Why wouldn't they hire one to kill, like, Danny or Jon? That's I true. I understand they're, like, super expensive. Like, we don't we don't see any Faceless Men. Yeah. Well, uh, we can't really yeah. see them, really, can we? Uh, well, I mean, we yeah, we don't know, really. We don't know. Anyone, like, everyone's they, a Faceless they, Man. Yeah, maybe, yeah. It's but, just like in, like, the uh, MCU, like, everyone's a scroll. Yeah, yeah. But in this, everyone's a face. Everyone's a face, man. But no, yeah, like, I'm just, that sort of just come out, like, come up, like, why in, Why not, instead of buying an army, just buy a fucking, the best assassin there ever is. Buy faceless yeah. man. They, I bet you they cost less. Just buy him and he'll just jack and Hagar and he'll fucking kill Danny and John. And, you know, the, the deal's done because... Really? Like, oh, you, you know, it would even be more trippy if, like, Cersei hired a faceless That's, man, right? Yeah. And then uh, and then that faceless man turned out to be Aya. Like, she's, like, oh, double shit. What? Yeah. Oh, shit. That would be I've, so sick. I wasn't thinking about that. I was actually thinking instead, what if Cersei hired a faceless man and Aya's going to, fa- like, verse that faceless man before, like... There's going to be a battle between Faceless Men. Right? Oh, that would be cool too. Against Jack and Hagar. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, oh. I think she'd die. I didn't see if she could beat him. But, but who knows? That would be so funny. It's just like, I like suddenly, um, like I just want to see like next episode, I just running around, putting on different faces and then yeah. suddenly just like throughout the episode, just, you know how it like um cuts to like last episode, it cuts. From um, the battle to inside Winterfell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out, the tone shifts yeah, and so all that stuff. In yeah. this next episode, episode five, we'll um, have yeah, the like, big battle outside. The big battle inside, outside. Yeah. And then the, you know, the stuff happening inside and having like maybe uh, the hounds obviously first um, the mountain oh, no. finally. And while that's happening, that could be like a distraction. And then Aya yeah. uses yeah. that distraction to then just go around killing whoever she wants and then finally boom boom that's it i just feel like it's too easy i just feel like it's too easy i don't know i just feel like i could just literally go there anytime and kill Cersei. i just feel like it's too easy i feel like yeah. there's i feel like there's something i feel like there's something that's got to stop that from happening and i feel like this jumps ahead a bit but I don't Do think you have I am feeling, I have killing. a weird feeling that Kyburn could be a first man as well. I don't like, know. Yeah, out he just, no, I, but I he just he definitely has that that vibe, you know, well, to him. I can't. Like, especially, the only thing I do want to say, what's the vibe from a faceless man though? Like, it, I understand what you mean, but it's very like, like when we saw Jack and Hagar yeah. for the first time, he was very mysterious, and he and he it looked as though he knew as though what was to come, yeah. you know, and oh, he was true, very yeah. sure. Of things. Who knows? And that's yeah. like sort of the same as Kyburn. He's very, you know. Yeah, because like the faceless that. men are sort of they're just they don't like they they do whatever someone hires them to do. They're not like they don't obviously take sides really. So like yeah, he could literally she could have hired a faceless man. Um, I, like I feel like that would be the smartest decision, even if mm. she hired one to like protect her and make it Kyburn or something like that, or even someone else. Um, yeah. Or even she's a face. She's a faceless man now. I, actually, I don't see that happening considering she's pregnant. So I don't see faceless men being able to replicate that. So unless yeah. they have a lot of pillows underneath their skirts. But, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. So. But yeah, um, going back a bit, then we see John and uh, Davos leave Winterfell. And I think, I, I feel like this is the end of, of a couple of characters we won't see ever again. So Tormund. Mm. Um, Sam, yeah, Gilly, oh. and Ghost. Oh, I understand the controversy behind Ghost. What the fuck? Honestly, I was over Ghost the second time I saw him in this season. Oh no, yeah, I was over. over they're, not the first him, they're not using him. They're not using him. They're not using him properly, so they're definitely not going to use him properly. Yeah, I don't right think. Yeah, correct. but so I was like, every time I gave, saw him, I was like, yeah. But cool. I don't get. They gave him a bit of like almost like sympathy in the sense like we saw him and the, like he like. 
you know, he does that typical dog thing where he's just sort of like trying to call for John, but John just looks at him and just like... Oh, he's just, you, yeah, he just yeah. ignored him the whole time. I don't feel like... But there's no budget or anything. Like, it would have only went for like five more seconds, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> there was this funny like, thing I was reading, like, is a comic, is some comic somebody made. It's like, ghosts sort of after this. He's like, actually, he goes into like, I don't know, he, he somehow writes a note. He writes a message. And he sends a message to Cersei saying that John, uh, like, the fleet's coming to Dragonstone. You know, oh, yeah. this message I comes from that. someone else and stuff like or that. Like, or, like, um, uh, Ghost is, like, using the barristers to yeah. kill um, the dragon and that. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck. Like, He's just yeah. like, I can't believe you did this to me, John. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just sort of, yeah, it's a sad thing to see these characters gone. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't see them coming back. So, Tormund's gone. The wildlings are going back to the true north. Um, mm. I guess they just want to do that. Um... Ghost is joining them, yeah, whatever. Um, Sam, you know, Sam and Gilly, though, now, you know, is going to be not, some... It wasn't really... They didn't really say where they were going, did they? No, but they didn't look like they were coming with John. Obviously, so. they were going to safety. Yeah. But yeah. I don't I really know. see them coming back for any particular reason. Because Sam's done his, like, major part, which was the Battle of Winterfell. He did his... Whatever he had to do to learn about the world yeah. and shit. Um yeah, like I mean, I could see like how depending how this goes down, like at the on the finale. Yeah, if John's still alive, maybe Sam will go see him again. Like, and maybe we'll see him at the end. Maybe if not, if not, then then I don't think ever. Oh no, I'm just thinking. I don't know. I this sort of just came up. Just um, you know, S- Sam. Obviously, you know, this sort of we've seen them. You know, John and Sam. This this relationship build this this friendship this best of friends, um, from the beginning and now they're just sort of leaving. I just, oh, just sort of like wow, just just this happening. It just like it was this... a good it was a good farewell though. Like he was oh, just, like, I loved it. the best I friend it. I ever had. Yeah, like, it, I don't know. I keep coming it, back it makes... to Lord of the Rings, right? Um, I I, I just <laughs> yeah. came back to another scene when we at the end of Return of the King when Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin. Going with Gandalf, they're going to the um the boats. I can't remember the fucking boats were, but and um there were Gandalf was going with Bilbo. They're going onto the boats. I can't remember where they're going. They're, they're going to the heaven or whatever. I can't remember what the fucking heaven's called. Uh, but then Frodo's like he's leaving too, and it's, I just remember that scene of just Sam and Frodo. It was so sad. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, no. I knew that. Yeah, and just sort of the. That, I hated that scene. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, it made me so <laughs> sad. Just and it, it just reminded me. Just to just just think about it. Just this friendship of these characters and oh, man, Sam's are the best. I just all the Sams are so good. Yeah, you always need a Sam in your life. Yeah, you always need a Sam. Oh, fuck, I need to find a Sam. Um, me too. <laughs> but yeah, then we the farewell of those characters, which is um, definitely a sad thing. But you know they've had their their time. But that's all thing. All good things must come to an end. Um. But then we move ahead to the most, oh, not the most disturbing, but one of the most disturbing parts was the fleet, um, Danny's fleet uh, heading to Ni- uh, Night, I was about to say Nightstone, Dragonstone, and we see them on their fleet. I'm assuming that's the fleet they had parked out, I guess, in the north, not, mm-hmm. I don't think it's the Iron Fleet from the Iron Islands, just because... I don't know, I don't feel like that was the Iron Fleet, or the, their Iron Fleet, whatever. Uh, but then we see, obviously, um, we get a little bit of time where Tyrion, oh, I guess, yeah, uh, obviously Sansa tells Tyrion about um, the secret of um, of John and touching on that, I feel like she's did that on purpose, but I feel like she's, like, the, the biggest thing, well, I think, obviously, she's done it on purpose, but I feel like there's a bit of influence from Littlefinger from there. Just sort of like the idea she sort of learned from Littlefinger, if you get what I mean. Like talking yeah. about inter- information and all this stuff. Like she knows that if she tells Tyrion, this will get out of hand. She knows that it's gonna like potentially ruin Danny, and that's what she kind of wants. Um, and I guess sort of like she's sort of thinking on that Littlefinger level in the sense that you know this is what he would have done if anything. 
but then in the fleet, when they're on the fleet and the ships, uh, we see Varys and Tyrion talking, and Varys um, is the one who says, you know, talking about uh, it's now uh, information or whatever. You know, it's not a secret anymore. And so, yeah, whatever. Secrets, yeah. No one fucking... Mm. No one trusts anyone. No, Don't trust anyone in this fucking TV show. Um, just goes to show. Um, but, like, yeah, it's that sort of, like, it's that conflict now of just talking about, like, who's the better, like monarch is it john like they've seen john people are drawn to john people respect him he's a war hero he's like this he's his, this heroic figure who everyone sort of like looks up to but then there's also mm. danny who there's people who look up to her but in reality people only look up to her from essos not really from westeros really it's just because i guess she's only been here for a little bit so you can't really like give enough evidence to prove that she's really worthy of the throne and stuff like that. But then we get the like, scene. I feel oh. like the most ideal situation John took the throne and like and Danny had a separate uh monarch like over in you know Essos and then they worked together to like Yeah but she know. wants fucking King's Landing. Yeah, exactly. King's Landing. She just wants it all. Um I guess we I, mean, I don't the... know. Mar- Marine looked really awesome in my like, I feel yeah, like but better. what are those sons of harpy guys? They're fucking dangerous. There's fucking like yeah. fanatic noblemen or whatever. Um, there's weird. I don't whatever they are. The sons of harpies and I don't know. I feel like that we, place ne- we never actually got to hot. find out. Like I don't. I don't think we'll ever find out like what happened. Like because we just left Marine and we well, the second sons left, took it over, um, didn't they? Is that what they're called? Second yeah, sons? they took they took over and um, Dario Naharis was pretty much left in charge. To deal with the the harpies, yeah. But then, yeah, then we just we left that story arc. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna go back, and it's gonna be there's no longer the second sons or anything. Oh, there'll be the second sons, but it won't be that guy on it anymore. Uh, but yeah. who knows? I feel like I just wanna. I think we can talk about this firstly before we talk about what happened in the fleet and stuff. But eventually, yeah. we see Tyrion and Varys talk again. They have this conflict of talking about who deserves to be on the realm. And again, this comes up with the idea of Varys, sort of his entire ideals are focused around speaking for what's best for the realm. Alright? He does everything for the realm. And it's this, I like this sort of like, this interesting thing when Tyrion like talks about it and sort of like, you know, Varys, how many fucking kings have you served? Like six or whatever, you know? And he talks about all the stuff that he's had to do and... And sort of like, have they all been for the realm and, and all this shit? But it's also like, like Varys never picks a side, really. He's just, he's more of a, he's, I guess all, more or less he's just an advisor. He doesn't pick sides, he just advises on what's best for, I guess, even both people, really. But even then, I think like, because like, Tyrion talks about him like, like, will he ever choose someone? Like, is will, he, will, Tyr- will Varys ever you know, decide that this is the person for the throne. Um, but it, he brings, I guess, yeah, Tyrion, I'm not Tyrion, Varys brings that sort of, I guess, that wider scale, wider scope, sorry, on the on the entire, like, uh, TV show that we don't really yeah. consider is the sense that what about all the other people, the hundreds and thousands of people who don't deal with politics, who don't deal with these giant wars, but suffer from all of that, right? Yes. And people it's a very... Starving. Yeah. It's a very sort of, I guess, you know, it, when you think about this, obviously it's just a fantasy world, but like when you think about it, it's just the, the idea behind that sort of, yeah, with all these like big things happening, you know, what about just the normal people? How do they fare? They just get screwed over every time, essentially. Um, and, and obviously Varys doesn't want that. Um, and I, I sort of like that, really, when you think about it, is that... Not very many noble men or noble people or any higher ups really give a shit about the common folk. Um, yeah. They they might care a little bit. They're like, yeah, maybe these people need a bit more food, but like that's it. They don't like think about what they do is ruining them. Even like the subtlest things they do, even by just like moving, like for example, moving troops from the north to King's Landing, that removes all like the males from the north, right? That that removes like most of the fighting able people or the young people from the north to go to king's landing what about like all the families there who have to live by themselves in the winter they have to yeah. deal with like 
trying look it's winter right how the hell are they going to survive in winter when it's just like the the mother and like a couple of children so so it's sort of it's that realistic standpoint to it and i think that's also another good thing that game of thrones does is it brings in that realistic standpoint it brings in that sort of wider scope of everything it doesn't just focus on um it just doesn't focus on like the main cast in the sense of their games it's it's also the implications from what they've all done it's, it's the impact yeah. that that has come from them that has been dealt with the common folk we see the slaves obviously them all being released in essos um and we see everyone here really i think everyone fucking in westeros has had the worst time every all the common folk have had a terrible past couple of years i feel like they've had rulers come and go they've had people fucking they've had all their because think about it they've had probably the most amount of wars or fights in a long time right within the past like 10 20 years imagine all the young people who died and meaning that there aren't very many families left um they're just killing everyone um it's just yeah it's just adds that more i guess yeah realistic wider scope and varus does bring very interesting things but i guess it's also like varus needs to like i guess also understand because i feel like he's very undecisive oh actually i don't know i feel like he's undecisive in the sense of who he's going to choose because he has reasons why he will help danny but he also has other reasons why he won't help her because obviously he he's the biggest thing he says is that he like even if he helps her he he's going to help her for a mistake and stuff like that uh Mm. like who knows maybe varus might even leave danny and go join i don't think he's going to join cersei i I think he understands that cersei's a terrible queen but he'll probably join john or something like that you know yeah like once he betrays Danny, and if he's unsuccessful, Danny is going to kill him, yeah. roast him. So that's the biggest worry that he has. She said that to to his face. Like if he ever betrays her, yeah, oh, okay. he's gonna burn. I'll burn you, um, burn baby, burn. But yeah, it's very sad. Okay, but going back, then we see the fleet moving through Dragonstone. I, yes. I was reading the um, I was reading, oh, reading. I was watching that the inside the episode on YouTube, um, when the writers are talking about it, and one of the okay. writers, um, I can't. David I can't, Benoff or was it David? One of Lewis? them, the older guy, I think. Um, I don't David. know. I think. Sorry, I don't I know. Think this, da- I think writers, David's the old. Um, he said, and I've seen this come up. Is like Danny just forgot about the Iron Fleet. I know that made me <laughs> mad. I think I. I have okay. I have two sort of sides to that. Understandable in the sense that, yeah, they've had a big, big sort of past couple of weeks dealing with the 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 zombie threat and losing a lot of unit, but a lot of um of their men, and now having to deal with a reinforced Cersei army. But I think they would consider the fact that they're trying to fly into they're trying to go to Dragonstone, which is literally outside of King's Landing. And last time they went there, I think, well, not last time, but near one of the last times, the Iron Fleet was there. So, you think they might have taken that taken that into consideration? Mm. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're just like just, again tactics in this world isn't is not the best. Stri- strategic thinking isn't isn't at the the top quality. I would say. Um, like for me, this this scene. Yeah very like it kind of shows about like i i hate saying this because this is my favorite show and i'm biased towards it this fucking always... shows shit just because of the <laughs> fucking one thing no but like I know, I know. There, like okay. there's a couple of things that happen throughout the season especially also in season seven as well like just the show itself has come with a bit of I don't want to say bad writing. Just fucking say it. Just say it. Go and say it. We're here to critique the fucking shit in Game of Thrones, okay? It's not bad writing, but it's not as good as it could have been. Because I feel like so many people, especially especially this season, have either just had amnesia about (laughs) all this stuff that's happened, or it's just been a cause of bad writing. Like, one small example was in this episode when... Um, Tormund was praising John and saying, "What kind of man gets on the back of a dragon and rides the bloody thing?" 
But yeah. Didn't he do that? Tormund did that as well. Like... Uh, uh, I don't know about that. I feel like that's because he was drunk. Well, still, like... It's, I know what you mean. Like, but that's just one thing. There's, like, hundreds of either minor details or definitely major details with this with Euron's fleet. It's just like, oh, okay. Like, that just happened. Yeah. And, like, I, I kind of get it. You know, the show's on a budget and it's only six episodes and some, like things just have to happen and we have to give lenience to it and you know but i mean regardless i still love the show like Mm -hmm. after each episode i'll be like yeah that was an awesome yeah but yeah i just i felt like i just had to yeah no yeah it's like you know the thing i think about a lot about these when they give you shows stories novels films and all this other crap um i just feel like you gotta also think about it and the fact that there's only two people writing this script. Well, not writing the script, but they're writing the entire sort of overview of Game of Thrones. So just thinking about the pressure that they've got and trying to fit everything in, I feel like it's probably the hardest thing ever. Just thinking about it. They, they, they're, they're writing the biggest TV show in the past decade, right? And the amount of pressure that's on them to try and write it so it's perfect. And yeah, I definitely see there's like discrepancies in certain things that have come up. But I definitely see, I definitely take it, I understand how hard it is to get everything right and trying to write to a good standard. I'm not saying that Mm -hmm. I have, like, any, like, evidence or any sort of backing to prove that I can say that. But I feel like if you think about it, if you were to ever write a story and trying to write it to, like, a really big audience and trying to satisfy everyone and trying to get everything right the way you think everyone will enjoy it, it's really hard thing because also you got to take in, a, in consideration is they're also writing for themselves really a writer's not just going to write for someone else obviously they're oh, going to yeah, write obviously. for themselves yeah. and maybe they thought that these certain things like yeah obviously the amnesia shit like maybe wasn't but maybe that sort of just came across as maybe they thought of some maybe the way that we're looking at it is different to the way that they were actually looking at it and that's the biggest thing in terms of interpretation that's the biggest thing in terms of any story is the way that we interpret it and I feel like it's it's sort of hard because maybe they the way that they've portrayed everything maybe it was actually meant to you're meant to look at it some other way because like that can happen it's like certain things that we look at considering what lens we're looking through can be different but yeah it's definitely oh, sort no, of I totally get that yeah uh, but no I definitely I understand there's some things that happen in here that was which felt stupid but I just feel like I I'm I'm all right with sort of even these little bad things that happen because I just think that the the amount of other good shit that's come has definitely outweighed all the bad shit that's happened. And yeah, I, definitely I agree. Think, with, I I agree with yeah. that. And it's I'm not detracting from your what you said because I 100% agree with certain things you said. Um, but I just yeah I think that maybe the biggest thing is that like the only consideration that I always sort of try and take in the when I want to talk about movies or anything is just that. People, there's normal human beings who are writing this. Um, I don't want, I like, they're trying to make the best thing they can, obviously for money, but obviously to make people happy and stuff like that. But I understand it all. Uh, I think, yeah, definitely. Uh, but moving ahead, because this is going long. Um, yes. <laughs> we see, obviously, we see the dragon, the both dragons flying, and then obviously we get the very traumatic scene of Rhaegal sort of just getting just like out of fucking the blue, like boom, killed. Boom, boom. Yeah, one, two, three, right through the chest, right through the wing, and right through the through the head. Mm, we just saw yeah. him survive this giant zombie army. Now he died to three arrows. These arrows yeah, are I tough know. things. These fucking things. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's got to be some fucking way to defeat that. And what, um, they're all around King's Landing now. It's like, yeah, yeah well, I don't think uh, Danny's going to yeah go through that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then we see... Um, Rhaegar fall and die and just Danny sort of her rage you could see the rage filling through her and it's definitely like yeah this is starting to get to the point of like oh shit she's starting to get fucking real mad um, yes. and then we see obviously this is on another that note point. of mad like you know the mad yeah queen. mad queen I know uh, but I think uh, first is that we see even that mad instinct I guess is her just diving straight towards the Iron Fleet and then just turning around uh, halfway don't really understand that point i guess the point of it was that 
maybe it's more or less that point of like she's not afraid I feel like I think that might might have been the point of it all is that she's not afraid that these guys are gonna fucking shoot her because she's coming for them to kill them eventually and I feel like I feel like the point of what she was doing was to, to like to spread fear even though in this worst moment she's trying to spread fear into those those people because this dragon is coming straight towards them though they've got all these weapons that could instantly kill it she's still coming straight towards them obviously then she flies back you know there's also other tactical things here why don't she just go around and burn the entire fleet because it looked like the arrow the ballista things they couldn't turn fully 360 and because is, they weren't yeah. there weren't any at the back so i don't think they could have shot at the back so you know i understand a lot of things going on so but yeah and then yeah we see sadly um they they uh the, their entire fleet get destroyed the danny's fleet get completely demolished and then we see some of them survive gray worm varus Tyrion, but we don't see uh, miss sunday um she's been taken because gray worm told her to get on a skiff which is like a little boat so <laughs> it's not good um yeah and then yeah then we move ahead a bit um, just before the meeting between Danny and Cersei, we get the scene where Sansa and Brienne, 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 Brienne are told about what happened with the fleet, and Jamie, Jamie's told, and then we get that scene of him not even saying anything, but we can tell there's like conflict when he's sitting at the fire in Brienne's room, just sitting there and just thinking, and then obviously he gets up, gets ready to leave, gets on his horse. Brienne tries to stop him, but he basically tells her that he needs to go to King's Landing for Cersei. Uh, saying that he's a uh, terrible person, how he's a hateful person as well as Cersei. He's, I guess it's there's an interesting thing that there's clearly he he also understands there's a there's a new like a new chance for him to be here with Brienne. You know, by being with her, he can start a new life essentially. Um, yeah. But it's almost like an addiction he has to Cersei, that he can't stop. He he understands that even though she's a terrible person, he still can't fathom not being with her, right? He needs to be with her because he knows that Danny's going to blow the fucking shit out of King's Landing and now he <laughs> wants to be there. I don't, I think, I, I don't understand why people are saying it ruins his character by any standpoint because I think it completely fits with his character because his oh, entire yeah. ideals, his entire, like, methods and everything that goes on his thoughts is his entire conflict between basically what's good and what's bad he's broken odes but he's managed to fix some of them he's fucking killed people he's pushed a kid out of a fucking um windmill you know out of window right um, yeah but he's come to save that kid's life essentially he's come to do with his bad he's done bad things he's done good things and i don't think this i feel like this is just like another it's this point of him leaving is just another one of those it's just but now the conflict the conflict inside his head has finally leaned closer towards Cersei this time instead of with Brienne he's just like he can't he has to go there and I think it's just I think it's interesting and I definitely think it feels it fits completely with his character and I don't see it ruining him I think though I think the whole thing that was good I don't know, this might happen, but his entire he's going to have conflict. He's going to be thinking about it this entire time as he's going to um, King's Landing. And even, like, I feel like he's going to be lit into King's Landing. He's going to make his way in, and he's probably going to get his way to Cersei. And, like, I bet you there's going to be a point. I just feel like there's going to be a point. Maybe there's going to be John and Danny. Let's say, for example, John and Danny are in the, in, in the throne room with, with um, Cersei and Jamie there. And then she's like, maybe Cersei's just about to kill john or danny or or something like that and then like jamie's just there you know thinking like the conflict's still going on like he knows how bad cersei is but he knows he i guess it's not really love anymore really it's just an obsession with her um, oh yeah i'd say it's not a love thing anymore it's an obsession with her but i feel like it, it, like this is one outcome is that he's going to just kill cersei like we we're all told with the prophecies but the point of what I'm trying to say is that the conflict that is in his head is going to continue, but it's going to get to a point where he's going to make a decision. It's either going to be that he's going to side with Cersei, which I highly doubt because of everything that he's come to believe. However, I've been wrong with other people, so who knows? But 
there I feel like it's going to be more leaning to the side of the good side that he'll either he will somehow stop Cersei and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's what's going to happen. I don't think it ruined his character by any chance. Um, no, I think it, it, I think it emphasized who his character really is. He's a character who's basically sitting on the fence. Um, yeah, like time. it's exactly what you said. It emphasizes like his character, but his character is based. Yeah, he's based on both sides, really. He's based yeah. based on Cersei and the good guys, I guess, is the way you can look at it. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. then we um move ahead a bit, and we see the final to the final part. Danny meeting with Cersei. <laughs> Fuck me! How the hell are they going to get into King's Landing? There's all these ballista there's on the no fucking fuck, city wall, no way. and no I I just saw, I fucking loved how we just see the Unsullied. There's like twenty of them outside the gates. It's just like. This is the siege. This is them. This is what they brought. This is who, yeah. all who survived from the Battle of Winterfell. <laughs> this is what we got. Um, yeah. and then they <laughs> They're have... They're just like, yeah, this is all we got. Now please surrender. Got. Surrender. <laughs> oh, I'll kill you all. Um, and then just the ballista just fucking and the arrows looking down at them. But another Lord of the Rings vibe here, when Kyben comes out, just felt like he was the Math of Sauron from uh, Lord yes. of the Rings. Just the way yeah, sort of it all came across is just like... Obviously, he's just the informant. He just tells the messenger, sorry. He's just basically there to say, yeah, um, we want your unconditional surrender. But no, we want your unconditional surrender. No, your surrender. You know, it's just like when Tyrion and, and back and forth. But yeah, um, I, I definitely got that so weird. Well, that's who he is. He's just a weird guy. Mm, yeah. I, he, he meddles with like necromancy, essentially. Exactly. He's, which is like, no, that's not what a normal person does. Um, no. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, he's a bit weird, but yeah, like I definitely felt that Math of Sauron vibe from it. And I like that. I like that because I, I, I. This is a bit off topic. I really don't like how they um they didn't put the Math of Sauron uh, scene in the actual release of Lord of the Rings: Return of the King because they put it as a deleted scene. Um, that, that's a bit off topic. Yeah. I, um. So uh, back in topic with Tyrion, then sort of, uh, Kyburn's like, you know, fuck. Um, we know about your weakened soldiers. We know about the battle, you know, we you won, you know. Um, but we we're we're much stronger now. We've got twenty thousand more men. So you know. Yeah, and then, gold. yeah we've got the Thai Golden Company. And then Tyrion tries to talk sense into Kyburn, doesn't work out. Tries to talk sense into Cersei about her child, um, letting them live and sort of yeah, no bloodshed. But you could just tell that even though she looked like she was considering it. I feel like she did that on purpose to like deceive Tyrion for like that, that almost like to give him that little bit of hope in the sense that maybe Cersei might give in. But I feel like Cersei was deceiving Tyrion then when Tyrion is like, what about your child and everything? And, and the way that we saw Cersei was like, she was looking around a bit like anxious almost, but I feel like she put that on like a face. She put that on to like, to like, to like almost give Tyrion that sense of like that hope. But she's just la- she like smiles at the end, sort of like, yeah, fuck you, I'm not giving up, you know, <laughs> fuck you. Um, it all goes back to that first statement in season one, you know, you either play the game, with, you either win or you die, essentially. Um, yeah. And yeah, and then we see, you know, like we see, f- we, we we get a bit of Miss glimmer Sunday. of hope. He's like, <laughs> she's like, she walks over to Miss Sunday, and then, and then the words that come out, you know, like say your final words. Oh God, and then. After a little bit, I'm so mad. yeah, and then she says, um, Jukaras, which is definitely obviously there's a lot of meaning behind that. Obviously, the I guess the most obvious is that, um, it's also like an indication to the first time that she was freed. Remember all that time ago when she, um, yeah, when Drogon burned that slave master guy and released all the unsullied. Um, she said Jukaras, but also Jukaras is almost like it's almost like a thing to tell Danny that. You know, burn these fuckers up for me, you know? Yeah. Burn them yeah. all, send them to hell, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like the Mad King, burn them all. Burn, burn them all. all. Um, but then we obviously see the 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 emotion, the absolute sort of the rage, oh. the, the build up of this, like, this fire within um, Danny. And it's all focused and then, on and Cersei. And then Grey Worm. Even Grey Worm. Oh. Oh. Like before, he was that. just like he had no emotion, and now where he was, he has 
proper emotion. It's just like, it's just a fuck you, you know, Cersei. I can't wait till you die. I just want her to die, you know. Like I, I wanted to burn. I was just like, I, I needed like a punching bag after that episode. I know. Like, I, just want to I wanted a Sunday to go with Grey Worm and go to the Isle of Marth. I just I wanted that, at least that one thing. <laughs> no, sadly, Game of but Thrones no. does not want to do that for you. Um, but the Breaking tension is so again. the tension is so high. It's just yeah. like it's reaching. It's it has essentially reached the boiling point, where she oh, is yeah. not. Danny's not giving into any fucking surrendering claims and shit. She's just gonna fucking burn the shit out of the town, out of the city. And yeah, going back oh. to your thing, Mad Queen. You know, Mad Queen. Uh, obviously. She looks pretty mad, and she is a queen, <laughs> yeah. so she's a mad queen. But I, I, I understand that sort of like yeah, she's gonna burn them all. Ooh, um, I don't know though. We'll find out. Because I kind of thought maybe Cersei might be the mad queen, but maybe Danny might be the mad queen, or they might both, both. be the mad queen. I both. I reckon both. Yeah, both mad in their own way. Yeah. Well. I believe we'll click and move on to the final section to talk about next episode. Well, Christian, this has gone for quite a while, but it has been an interesting talk nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> and um, only two episodes left, which is undoubtedly uh, a shame. I hate it. I, I just wish it uh, didn't end. Uh, but Just shake. <laughs> all good things sadly have to come to an end. But, obviously... Uh, we got a bit of a teaser, obviously, for next episode. The last war essentially begins. Or the la- oh, I guess the last battle, really. There's no like the again tensions have risen to their boiling point. Um, Danny is literally going to release a, a rage uh, against the city. She's going to fucking completely demolish it. But who knows how that will happen? Uh, we finally get to see the Golden Company um, walking through there, like. Their fucking super sick ass armor. I definitely got the vibe of like unsullied from them, from their shields and their spears and the way they sort of walk. I don't think they're likely unsullied in the sense that they were born and bred. Oh, not born and bred, sorry, they were trained. Um, I feel I think the Golden Company are more or less just a, a proper mercenary company instead, in the sense that they just hire people. But we'll find out, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I I definitely think the Golden Company looks sick. They have, like, their golden armor and their shields. Mm. I really like the shields. They've got, like, the shields are, like, I think it's, like, three skulls and, like, a red um, mm. spear that goes through them. I really like that. It looks really cool. Uh, but they look like a proper fucking, a proper military to deal with. And, yeah, we see them all outside of King's Landing. Oh, bat, um, a little bit. Um, it turns out the Dothraki and Unsullied, they're still alive somehow. I don't understand how... A lot of them survived. So, because they said, talking about when they talking about the battle plans of sending John and Davos down, they still had a lot of their army from the Unsullied and the Dothraki. So, so I wonder if they all survived the battle, or they were like kept in reserve, or they're just adding it so then they don't feel overwhelmed, you know? Because like, yeah. Otherwise, they'd only have like a thousand people, <laughs> and I don't think that's enough to to siege King's Landing. Um, mm. But yeah, we see them all lining up around King's Landing, and then we finally see at the end, the final bit, Euron on his ship as he looks up into the sky and the clouds, and we hear a roar. And I'm not sure, I you brought this up to me, is that you think there's more than one dragon roar? One more, war, more than well, one dragon poten- roar? Potentially, potentially. Um, there's theories for this. I obviously kind of think that it sort of would detract from everything because you'd be like oh she's got more dragons now where the fuck did she get those from if you get what i mean like it yeah. feels like a bit of out of out of place but that being said there's you know there's theories everywhere and you know a lot of theories make sense so there was a couple of theories but these come more from the book i think is that apparently dragonstone has dragons made out of stone so she might be able to summon fucking stone dragons from what? Dragonstone. <laughs> I was reading because um, the way that the descriptions were made in the book in Dragonstone, like, for, for example, I think it was talking about the, the like, the, the main war room. It was talking about it was, like, the belly of a dragon, the scales, and the and they were talking about one of the towers of Dragonstone. It looked like the head of a dragon. They were talking about the kitchen. It looked like 
another part of the dragon. So, like, there was a very, like, dragonification, I guess. It's the best way of saying yeah. it. Dragonification of, of descriptions in Dragonstone. So, yeah, there might be stone dragons. I think that would be sick. It would be that a bit one. weird. Um, and it would solve the ballister arrow problem because, you know, I don't think those arrows are going to pierce through stone. Or they yeah. might, but they would need a lot. Um, I mean, I feel like it won't happen, though. Like, again, with the budget, no no elephants, no giant yeah, ice. Come on. Fuck. They've got to do something. They, they, come on. There's got to be something more. But I def- there's the one thing that I'm more leaning towards is that Drogon's going to have, like, armor. He's going to have, like, proper dragon armor, which would be cool. Uh, because you don't see... In, in any really fantasy thing, you don't see dragons with armor, really. Because usually, when they're portrayed, they're these almighty beasts that, like, can't really be hit by anything. But, yeah. um, I definitely think, like, maybe there might be armor. Because, obviously, th- the way that they've shown it to us, Guron's surprised, right? So, there's either, this is my speculation, is that either, um, Drogon has surprised Euron somehow... Like Danny's surprised him, and that's why he looks like he's surprised. Or yeah, maybe that's like a vantage point. Yeah, maybe it's like some he like the the dragon came out of nowhere. He didn't su- suspect that. That's probably the most likely one. But I feel like, come on, by having that in there, it must mean something more, right? It must mean something. I don't know. Maybe dragon dragon armor. Maybe somehow there's actually more dragons, stone dragons. Or- or, you know, at least just something, please. Or flying <laughs> elephants. Um, flying elephants. Yeah, Dumbo just comes in. Dumbo, yeah. Um, <laughs> or, <laughs> or the Night King. <laughs> yeah, Night King's come back. Yeah, surprise, I'm back. He's fucked you. <laughs> oh, what, what about it's Bran controlling Rhaegar? But Rhaegar's dead. Yeah, but, yeah, I don't know. Oh, fuck. I don't know. But maybe he can control a dead thing. No. Yeah. Or, like, yeah, or he's controlling an entire a murder of crows as they come yeah. to swarm <laughs> Euron. That would be like... That'd, that'd be that would very helpful. Sense. Yeah, Thank that would you, be helpful. Brian. Because, you know... <laughs> You're actually doing yeah. something. <laughs> I'd see that working out. Fuck. If that happens... I'm the one who said it. They never know that. Yes. Um, I will, yeah, I'll praise you for that. But like, yeah. also, like, visually, that would be pretty. That would like, be cool. Just yeah. all of them coming. All out the of crows. Nowhere, all these like, crows. And then we might be able to see the people. wolves come. The fucking giant wolf pack and the fucking kill everyone. Um, I don't know how the yeah. hell they're gonna win. I just don't understand I'd, how they're gonna win. I'd love to see um, Reese, Nymeria, and yeah, the wolf pack. That would be. Fuck. I just don't. I'm in that position now just like how are they gonna win this battle but i had that idea of like how they're gonna win winterfell and they somehow did that um so i just yeah ah, fuck i don't understand how they're gonna do this they they have the lannister army golden the golden army they have these giant ballista around the entire gates we know that king's landing has i don't think it's ever been taken or it usually has never been broken into so this is a hard task so well, we'll without out. without betrayal in the yeah obviously maybe, with like maybe the golden the company might um join the the, the guys might join um Danny's yeah, army that, that, the that iron the iron bank are like fuck you you know we control the army and we felt like you Cersei you're an asshole um and we like Danny more so because she has a dragon so that's yeah. what I'd be like if I was a if I was the owner of a bank I think I would back the person with a dragon. Um, oh yeah <laughs> um, but yeah we'll find out I guess well I believe that is it if there's anything else that you want to say Christian uh, no I think we pretty much covered everything yeah this was quite a long episode compared to a lot but this this I feel like it was an interesting thing that I, I was reading the other day is that the the actor who plays Jon Snow um, Kit Harrington. yeah Kit Harrington. he um, I think he, he talked about episode 4 being like a very important episode it's like it's the it's the it's it's not the penultimate it's not one of the biggest ones but it's an important episode in the sense that now they've won this big ass war they've got this other war to deal with that could literally mean the death of them all that could literally mean everything they well not everything they did was for nothing but if you get what i mean just sort of how everything's gone up is that if they lose yeah if if, if they if they fuck everything up like it's gonna be for nothing but we'll find out well i believe that is it thank you for joining us again christian 
very much appreciate yes. it. And if anyone's You're watching welcome. this far, thank you very much. And the next episode should be up within a week. Um, I believe episode three was released in conjunction with this episode, so yeah. But I believe that is it. I don't know any. I thought of a quote to say, but um, what about what, what about the one that Cersei says? What's the one she says? The first one she says about the Game of Thrones. Um, oh yeah, when you win, yeah. when you play the Game of Thrones, you you win, win, or you, or you don't win and die, <laughs> and you you become Sean Bean. And you become Sean Bean. Everyone turns into Sean Bean. Everyone becomes Sean Bean. He, 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 that Sean would be Bean. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>